Welcome everybody to MB Auto House, guys. Uh, this is our very, very first episode. I'm pretty excited about this, guys. Um, of course, we got the epic music playing in the background. You're probably asking yourself, what the hell is MB Auto House? Well, basically, we're a channel for you guys, your Mercedes-Benz owners that want to do it yourself. Or if you don't, maybe you want to see what it goes into doing some of these jobs. Um, basically, this is the channel for it. You know, you guys want to save your money and do it yourself. Alright, enough with the music. Cut the music, guys. You guys basically get the point. Alright, for the very first episode, I want it to be something pretty basic. Something that anybody could do. You're not going to need any of these tools here. So I worked out a situation for you guys. You end up getting in your car, you hit the light switch, and boom, only one light works. So maybe this causes panic. You're like, damn, I don't have any money. What am I going to do? I don't want to pay these Mercedes techs to fix a light bulb. So this causes confusion. Then you start thinking, hey, I drive a Mercedes. They don't pull us over. And you're probably right. But if you're not, I have the solution. You could change it yourself. I'm going to show you how. All right. So now let's go into the more common bulbs that go out in your Mercedes. And that is your low beam bulb. That is because it is the most used. There are two different types of these bulbs. There's your xenon bulb and there is your halogen bulb. So I made this little comparisons chart here. Um, first starting off with the halogen bulb, price range anywhere from twelve to twenty dollars. It is a low voltage bulb. Uh, it's a usually a yellowish color and they use a H7 for the low beam bulb. On the other hand, the xenon bulb is really expensive, anywhere from ninety to about a hundred and twenty dollars. It is a high voltage bulb, guys. Um, you don't want to touch this thing when it's on, meaning that the car is on, lights are on. Um, even after you switch it off, you might want to let it discharge for anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. And this bulb uses the gas xenon, therefore getting its name xenon bulb. And it's usually a bluish color. So what I have here is a quick layout, guys, of a couple headlamps. This one is from a newer ML. Um, Mercedes usually always puts your low beam bulb towards the left. And right next to that one is your high beam bulb. And then this little one right here, the more known one to do, is your parking lamp bulb. And this strip right here on the bottom with the yellowish bulb, that is your turn signal. Same thing on this one, guys. Uh, low beams on the left, high beams on the right. The one closest to the inside there is your parking lamp, also known to do on this one. This is for your, um, not your latest model GL, but the one right before that one, your 164 chassis. So now finally we're at the point of where we can actually change the bulb. I feel like I've given you guys a decent amount of information with the two different styles, halogen, uh, xenon. And what I did here is I took out the three different styles, um, or three different types, the way they are held in the headlamp. And this one came out of a 220, which is an S-Class, I believe, model years. 2000 to 2006 till they changed to a new model. This is also seen in your E-Class 210 chassis, which is about 96 model year to 2002 till they changed and some of your older C-Classes. Uh, basically, I want you guys to see what it looks like up close. When you're changing this in the car, it is almost impossible to see sometimes. Really frustrating to do so. The first one here is almost like a cage type. So what I wanted to show you guys here is this part of the bulb where it has this little cutout and the headlamp itself has these two little brackets that holds it in place. That way the bulb cannot turn. And on the top left there, there's two hooks that hold this cage bracket design in place. First thing I do is I disconnect the power cable or your connector there and you move it out the way. And like I mentioned before, on the top left there, there's these two hooks to remove that bracket there or a cage. You're going to have to press in and then downwards. Once you have done that, it will be able to swing out of the way, just like I did there. And now the bulb is loose and ready to come out. If you notice, the bulb cannot turn because there is a little notch there in the bulb design that holds it in place. The headlamp itself has these two little like tabs that hold it in place so, and then the bulb is secured for you to put the bracket back on so i'll just pause the video here for a quick second and give you a, a little pointer here when handling these bulbs you do not want to touch the face of the bulb that is the the glass part that covers the heating element that creates the light itself um, reasons being that the oils from your skin touching this actually creates a hot spot on the glass 
and causing the bulb to break. If you ever had a situation where you're constantly changing a bulb, that may be your problem. So now you have gotten your new bulb and you're gonna install it. What you wanna do is remember, grab it from the bottom, at least try, it's kinda hard to do sometimes. You don't wanna touch the face of the bulb because it gets hot spots like that one has right there. I believe that's a used bulb. So what you're gonna do is keep turning it till you have found the little cutout where the bulb could fit flush. If not, it will never fit flush and it'll just fall right out. And then what I do is I grab this little cage bracket here. I push it in and then move it towards the right. So it grabs those two hooks in place. Now the bulb is completely secured. Once I've done that, I could put my connector on and I am completely done. Now we're gonna do the turn signal on this one. Um, it's this bulb right here. What you wanna do is remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Uh, you turn it to socket and bulb together towards the left. The turn signal always has a yellowish cover on the bulb itself. When putting back in, you're gonna have to find the spot where it fits right in, as I'm doing right there. Once you have done that, just turn it to right, re-secures it. So now we're gonna tackle here is your parking lamp bulb and your high beam bulb. First thing you wanna do is just press on that tab there, removing the cover. And as you can see here, we have two bulbs, the top left one there being your parking lamp bulb, and the one, the bigger one with the connector there that is visible is your high beam bulb. Now with this one, you don't have to turn right or left or anything like that. You can just pull it right out. Um, right here is easy to do because the headlamp itself is out of the car. While in the car, it's pretty hard to do. It's almost like you have to break your arm to get it. But as you can see here is uh, just one of these regular little bulbs. It just pulls right out, slides right in. When putting back into the car, there is no turning of it. You just fit it back in the slot. Uh, continue pushing until it's secure. Now here is your high beam bulb. It's almost like your low beam, but this one here is a little weird. Um, what holds it in place is those three little tabs, the two on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, again, it's a, I believe a H7 bulb. And as you can see, it has the little cutout. Only is gonna fit one way. That one is actually facing to the top. So once you take these bulbs out, you wanna look to see how it came out and which way it was facing. And once you have secured it, just like to make sure they're both in place. So now we have come to the end of the very first video. I decided to make this a two part video due to the fact that there is a lot of information on the first video, hopefully uh, helpful information. And uh, on the second part, I will be going over Xenon bulbs, um, the connectors, everything like that. Also, the tricky GLK headlamp bulb. Uh, did a close-up of that so you can see what's going on with that as well. Uh, make sure to check out the second part. Uh, it will be also helpful as well. Also, guys, make sure to subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. I will be posting up a video one every week.